Well, you know, here is one way to sell more spending. Put the fear of God into people saying that this is what happens if those cheapskate Republicans get their way on spending. Take a look. If we're not careful, the have nots in this country will rise up like the people in Baltimore. What happened in Baltimore stems from uh, from deeper economic issues. You're saying that, that budgets if, like this could lead to violence? Yes, sir, I am. OK, what he's saying is uh, vote uh, along with Republicans and it's Armageddon. Really? To former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty. You know, Governor, I heard that. I just said, surely. Uh, this guy's head isn't screwed on tight, but I'm sure that's a view that's going to be pushed again and again and again. Well, quit calling me Shirley, Neil. <laughs> it's uh, incredible, right? Kabuto. Yeah, it is incredible. And look, the, the, the notion that incremental changes in any one particular federal budget is going to incite or trigger rioting, looting, mass protesting, 24-7 news coverage, and all of that is really uh, preposterous. Look, there are some things where social unrest or even protesting, peaceful protesting is in order, but incremental changes in the federal budget uh, isn't one of them. I, I always wonder if money were the answer, I mean, Baltimore should just be a stellar example to the world. I mean, on a per capita student basis, it ranks only second to New York as far as the federal funding it gets. And like New York, neither is it lighting up the test scores. Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering if, if Republicans or if there is a, a response that they collectively have as a party to say, stop the spigot, that's not the answer. Well, sure. If you measured our commitment to areas of concentrated socioeconomic disadvantage just by how much money is going in, in most cases, uh, it's more money than many other places. So we have to think about it anew. And one way we have to think about it, Neil, is, as you know, there's a high correlation between income inequality and economic disadvantage and education and skill inequality. And so we need to have a very aggressive conversation in this country about improving the skill level and educational levels of this nation's youth and uh, people who need to But they got to do it in a way, beyond. Governor, and you and I have chatted about this before, that in, 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 in understandable ways in either ads or just to prove that Republicans are not the party of no, but the, if I don't know whether you just say, look, we spent trillions of a war on poverty, the poverty rate's about what it was, uh, you know, unemployment among uh, minority youths is about what it was, higher in some cities, including Baltimore, so that we got to quit beating that drum. But you always, that is not used, particularly, Governor, but Republicans are always on defense. Yeah, now let me give you just one example. Okay. One of the most important determining factors of how a child's going to do in school is the quality and preparedness of their teacher. You're right. So I'd be willing to spend more money on better prepared, high, highly qualified teachers, but not paying them based on seniority, Neil, paying them on performance and results. And that's not what's happening now. That's a very interesting idea right there. Uh, Governor, it's always good seeing you again. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks. And then